today and we say that uh, I'm more happy that from the other meeting that we had with uh, she leads why we invented she leads it is space uh, very safe uh, and uh, everybody say also very fresh and very energizing because um, we are working a lot with uh, different leaders uh, in, uh, in the I would say in Europe at the end and uh, during the last uh, more than 12 years, uh, I met uh, a lot of people in different situations. And when situations are really tough, when the business is very di difficult, someone is just say, oh, I'm losing because it's difficult. Other people, like Janina, are able to look at the reality, understanding how to I don't say manage it, but also how to improve it. And uh, observing people, being with people, she's able to really help everyone to reach a great results. And this is something that I saw with different leaders. Someone I would say are women, but not just women, but uh, I would uh, understand why some people is able to really put himself inside difficult situation and help everyone to win. And others are not able to do that. I'm more interested in understanding <laughs> who is able to do that because we can learn from them than looking at the bad part. So for this reason, I invited Janina because uh, being friends from some years, I would say, uh, we, we can learn a lot from her, really understanding how to be always himself and at the same time, how to be able to lead in a way that everyone can really lead, win, I, I would say. So two words about the first meeting that I had with Janina was, uh, I don't say when, Janina, so to <laughs> maintain our uh, secret age, however, we were in a conference in, in, in Milan. At this time, she was living uh, leading uh, in Milan at Siemens in, uh, in Milan. And uh, we were in a conference for healthcare. And she was speaking in a so energetic and so positive way that it was a, I was a really surprised. I was touched by her. Because normally, I have to be very transparent with you, normally I'm the most uh, uh, energetic person in a room. But in this case, I was not. Janina was 10 times more energetic than me. So at the end of the meeting, I said, I needed to know her more. I needed to understand really who is this amazing girl. And we started speaking, chatting, and then, we had some meetings uh, and I started to invite her in a, what I call prototyping. When I had some very special ideas, I would say also new idea, I invited her and she was able to help me really to put in place this idea. One idea is, as we can see here, this innovation leadership community uh, some years ago and she was uh, very, I was very happy that she was with us, uh, taking part uh, in this amazing journey together with uh, other people too. And uh, for this reason, at the end of the day, carry on and looking at her amazing pathway, I understood that she has a different secrets. So she's really able to make a difference every time in a very positive way. And again, not for her, but for the people that are around her, she's really able to give the best and leading, leading and putting herself in, uh, I would say, serving others, but not uh, is uh, like a cool world. Everyone is thinking about servant leaders now, but she's really able to do that. And for this reason, I invited her today and I would like now to shut up and uh, say to Janina, so please 
tell us more about your secret. But before to ask her about her secret, how she's able to do that, I wanted to share with all of you the book that uh, has been her last uh, really important effort about uh, it's now, Lieben Führen Arbeiten. And uh, she's uh, telling a lot about herself and not just about herself. In a few months, uh, we could uh, read uh, in uh, German, who is able to read German, but I would like to translate it in Italian if uh, I could. And everyone, I, I'm very, very curious to read more about uh, yourself, Janina, from your book. But now I really want to shut up and listen <laughs> about you. So my first question to you is, following you during these uh, at least uh, 10 years, I understood a lot, I learned a lot, but I wanted to tell, to ask you really, what is your secret in any kind of situation, be able to look at the reality, also if not the best one, and give to everyone with you the best opportunity to change and to improve. And I saw with my eyes that every time everyone is winning with you. So really I shut up now. And as <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Maria Rosaria. So I was, um, I mean, first of all, you should not praise me so much before the session actually starts because we don't know how it's, how it's going to end. So hopefully no one is actually getting bored. And thank you as well for doing the publicity for the book that comes um, out um, mid of April in German, as you said. And I can tell you at this point, um, you know, when you, it was a new experience for me, you write it and then you head it into the publisher and then you have to correct it and you have to correct it and you have to correct it. And I can actually only tell you today, I don't like that book at all anymore. I'm happy that it's gone. I don't have to see it. And hopefully I'm going to get excited again before it comes out because I've been reading it so often. No, just jokes apart. It was interesting also for me to say that um, all the pictures that Maria Rosaria was showing and what you didn't say is that the first meeting at the conference, I was eating all of the biscuits and all of the pictures actually had to do something with food and wine, which I think is also pretty much like a, a real track record. But jokes apart, um, I think, and when we spoke about it, very often when people and managers are leading or are thinking about how to become the best manager to the guest, the best leader, they always think about what can I do for myself? And I actually think that the role of a manager and especially the role of a leader should be, what can I do for my team? And if my team is having a good time, then obviously me being part of the team, I'm going to have automatically a good time as well. So the point is about management and about leadership, it's not about being happy for yourself only, but being happy with the people that you're responsible for and pretty much like create an atmosphere. And for me, it has always been a learning that the better the team is, the happier I am. Because no matter what happens around me, you know, I mean, obviously when you're a manager, when you're a leader, then you maybe, you know, you always have different layers. You have your team and then you also have your peers and maybe you have your superiors or your managers on top of that, right? And it could always be that maybe you're in conflict with your manager or you're in conflict with your peers. But when you have a great team and when you have created that atmosphere, there's always a home to return, right? You know what I mean? So there's always a safe harbor that whatever happens, you can always come to your team and say, oh, you know, that was an awful meeting that I just went out or whatever. And I think when you think about it, it's the best. And maybe another step to that, it's um, something in some of you that maybe have heard some speeches of me as well. If you think about the best manager that you had ever had in your life, yeah, if you would do that, then you will remember the emotions that you had working with or working for that person. What that person gave to you, that that person, what that person did to you, the, the, you know, the opportunities, maybe the gratefulness, whatever they were showing. And so I think people live by what is it that is happening to your emotions. So if you create that working space, people will like it, people will put in an extra energy. And that, Maria Rosaria, was always something that I was trying to make happen. I see, I see very well. At the same time, my dear, 
I see you with a very strong uh, thought. So I mean, when I, I, I'm speaking with you, a lot of time I'm reflecting and I see that you have a, really a very strong opinion, a very strong idea on uh, what you are doing. And normally it's not the current one. So it's not the, the, the normal wave, you know, it's not the, the again, uh, the standard uh, vision of a relationship or people or also with, uh, you worked a lot in, a, in tough discussion with uh, trade unions. So I mean, you have always a very specific and strong idea. And this I, is something specific also about you. Can you I think there's, there's two things. Um, the one is, I think in every status quo that you're living and that you're working, there is always something, if you're honest to yourself and if you're honest to the environment, that you can do better, mm -hmm. okay? So why standing still and why not working on the things that you know, that you have been discussing with your team, that everyone that everyone sees, right, what could be better? So I think there always needs to be an aspiration to work on the things that you could improve and there is different opinions and there's different ways to do it. So that's number one. Second of all, I have to admit, I'm easily getting bored, you know, with like always doing the same repetitive things and always, you know, it works already fine. And if you have done it like five times, right? Okay, you can say, hey, it works, right? But then there is something new. So I always like, I'm joking about it. I would never hire me to run a super operational thing and to optimize it from 99.5% to 99.9. .9. That wouldn't be me, yeah? So I rather work on something where I can see there is progress and I can also feel the progress at some point. And I think what you always have to remember is that there is your inner, that you have an inner opinion and that you have a mind. And if you make sure that you stay independent in your thoughts and in your opinion, that is very helpful. But being independent, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't listen to other people. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't get you shouldn't reflect on the feedback of other people. It doesn't mean that you cannot improve and that you cannot learn, but that you're doing things that you're convinced. And once in a while, we all have to do things that we're not convinced of because this is what they ask from us. This is maybe what the majority wants, but that you still know I'm doing that and that's okay, right? I'm part of a team, I'm, right, I'm part of a group, I'm part of a company and we have to do it, but still I believe it could go better because for me, and I think very often we can see that with politicians, because politicians are a little bit more transparent. When people start to only work on things in the way that they're not losing their job, they become bad. You know what I mean? So when, when you only dare as much as you know you're on safe terror, yeah. if you only dare to speak up when you know you're not going to hurt anyone, if you only dare to change as little that no one feels disturbed you're neither improving the thing and you're always playing safe and playing safe doesn't make anything better so i always believe if you want to change things you need to be courageous and in order to be courageous you should not always worry about like oh what could happen if i'm doing this but you need to be independent for a certain part and that independence is not every single minute there can be days like this but it is pretty much like that is the basis to do the change. I like what you say about it, being independent. And I would like to ask you two things. The first one is about how to improve better, how to uh, increase and uh, give the right uh, nourishment <laughs> to your uh, independency. And the second one is uh, um, how you are also, we were speaking about uh, to create the right atmosphere with people that are with you in the challenge you are in front of. And I want to ask you what really means to create the, the great atmosphere. We were speaking about a change in the setting. So first question, how to give the right nourishment to your independence, because this is crucial, I think. And the second one is about how, what it really means to change in the setting. So 
Uh, and why we, we, you identify this word as the first job you can do as a leader, but also in any kind of uh, specific role you have. So the first one, how to give the right nourriture to your independence. That's a very difficult question because I think independence means something else for every one of us. I think independence starts in your mind. And that means that you usually should have different options. You know, if that doesn't work out, then maybe you do something else or you try to do it and you know, you don't know how it feels when you're in it. So if you, if you take it and, and, and the coach once said to me, if someone was asking the question, have I had coaches throughout my career? Yes. And changing people, right? I mean, people sometimes depending when I was 30, I had different challenges in my life than when I, you know, was my mid forties and obviously also from different jobs. So I was always using people, I think that's the best gift that you can have in, in, in development, right? And if, if you cannot afford it to have a coach, I can actually tell you there's always people that are in a coaching, um, you know, that want to become a coach and they always need, need test coaches, right? So you can always get access to coaches or people that want to become a coach that need to have, I always call them the test objects, right? You know, where you can actually volunteer and you can start them there. And that's very, very helpful. So I think someone who's actually, you know, doing that sparing with you. And that independence means if you have different options in your mind, then you also know if that doesn't work out, there is something else that I can do. And you're not afraid that you could fail and maybe that option does not come in part anymore. So in terms of like speaking about your job, it's, if I would do that and I'm getting fired, well, then I do have to do something else. Or if that doesn't really work out, then I have to do something else. I think that's a part of independence. What you always have to reflect, there is always more than one option in life to everything. And it's only that sometimes we are blocked by finding those options. And we are afraid of going that step of finding those options. And honestly, I think it's a little bit backward. You should always live your life so that you can also pull different options. You know, I know people that have earned a lot of money, but they have also spent so much money that I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, of course, then you don't really have that many options if you want to earn such an amount of money every month, right? But if you think about like what makes you happy, then I think you come into different things. That's my opinion of independence. But I think every one of us has a different one, but you all have it. I mean, every one of us had it in there. And the second question was like, why to, why I was always putting that as a driver. Right. I think, I mean, we all work at least eight hours a day. Okay. Many of us work more. I mean, this is, this is a nightmare. If you spend eight to 10 hours every day in an environment that you really don't want to be. I mean, it's so much more fun if you go to work and you see people and you meet people and you work on stuff that you like than if you only do it to make a living. And so I was always inspired by people that gave me that freedom, that gave me that environment where I at least theoretically always liked to go. That didn't mean that every day I enjoyed it, but at least I enjoyed it most of the time. And so I always wanted to be someone that people would enjoy working. And so, for example, I... I never, and maybe that's, you know, sometimes there's also critical reasons to that, but I think it's like, if you don't have fun at work, right? If you cannot laugh, I mean, if, you, if there's not at least once a day that you're laughing, and now, now in the times of COVID, it's a little bit more complicated. Hey, this is amazingly not the place that you want to be, right? And so I always thought, whatever you work, and especially if you work on really hard topics, the more dramatic your work really becomes, the more stressful the work becomes. I think the more you have to create an atmosphere where you also have a lot of energy, where people are supporting and pushing each other, and that can make it and that actually have joy. And a very, um, a person once told me, he's a coach as well, he was my coach, but he said, there's a good recommendation that I always give to my people when they are in full frustration of whatever they are currently in. He says, every morning when you get up, you decide, I'm going to do it for today. I'm not taking a decision on tomorrow, but the alarm clock has been ringing. And for today, I decide I can manage and I will go through that day. And tonight, we're going to see about tomorrow. And I think, you know, it's such a simple, a simple sentence. But if you think about it, 
if you don't think about like, oh, this entire week, it's Monday and I have to still go through all of it or the entire month or what is coming. But if you only take the decision today, I manage, it becomes much easier. And by the way, that accounts in the professional life as much as in your personal life. Yes, Jens Corson. Someone is like, his name is Jens Corson. Yes, exactly. It's Jens who was like telling that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your reflection, your life, because this is your life. You, for what I see, you are so consistent with uh, the words that you are sharing with us. So this is really remarkable. And uh, before to start uh, opening the questions from people, uh, I would like to, uh, to share with you some questions that are uh, on the chat. So first of all about coaching, do you have a coach with whom you can reflect who gives uh, you honest feedback? Yeah, um, I mean, th that's what I mentioned. Yes, I did. And I, I do currently, I don't, but I mean, the thing is like, when you have met so many people, there is always like some interaction with people, whether you're currently working on them. And by the way, I think it's much more important that you're creating with the people that you're working on, that you establish that environment. There is always an interaction of feedback, right? That you're telling each other what you're thinking. And if you have created that trust, I always like to say the best thing is if, if, you, if you're working in a team or if you have, and, and that could also be friends, if you know that you can say everything to each other without that you lose the respect about being a person, hmm. then I think that's the best learning opportunity that you can have. As a team, when I really look at my former teams or whatever, if we could argue about something, about a process, about a product, but we respected us as persons, I think that was always the best option. Thank you. This is, yeah, this is super important. I really understand and uh, I follow you completely. I would like to go with other questions. So Ayesha, sorry if I don't uh, <laughs> uh, say in the right way your name, but is asking, how do you see mentorship, especially for uh, aspiring women? Mm. So two things to that. There is that one sentence that you might have known Mentorship is not sponsorship, and women very often are over mentored and under sponsored. You know that, right? Yeah. So, mentoring is important to support each other, to help each other, to give advice. You know, just like, and especially, you know, I thought I was it, certain things that I thought were super challenging when I was like early 30s or when I became a mother, right? That I didn't know how to handle now obviously seem to be totally overcome and totally normal. So, I think that is mentoring. But the problem is that many organizations and many companies say, well, we have mentorship. We don't know. I mean, women should advance, right? We have it all there. But there's a difference between mentorship and sponsorship. And sponsorship is mean I'm supporting a person totally independent, whether which gender or with ethnicity or whoever it is. It's a human being. And I'm giving that person opportunity and I push for that opportunity as being a superior person to that, to give that person a room, whether or not that person fits into the standard. And I think here comes the part, mentoring is like I'm supporting a person to become like that person fits into the schedule, but this is not diversity and inclusion. Diversity and inclusion means is like, we give the room and we change the culture so different people fit into the organization. You know what I mean? And by the way, that is not a gender topic. It's not about women adapting to men, it's about also men adapting to what does leadership or management looks like in an organization. Yeah. And if we all have to try to, to squeeze ourselves into a shape, right? Think about those shapes that you're doing cookies over Christmas, right? If you all try to become, I don't know, in a certain angle, that doesn't fit. We're, we are who we are. Yeah. And so that's the problem, Ayesha, about mentoring. I think it's very helpful. I think it can be very supportive. I think it helps your own little soul right? Mm -hmm. If there's someone else that gives you a recommendation, but that is not always the only trigger to really make the advancement of women or of other people. Yeah, I, I like what are you saying. And uh, I would like to, um, to share with uh, our friends here today. When we were preparing this, uh, this session, I was speaking with Janina. She told me, Maria Rosaria, you have not to speak just about women able uh, to make the difference uh, as we are seeing. Because uh, uh, it's not a question of women or men, 
but it's a question of the ability to really understand others uh, and uh, if you like to be empathetic and uh, really setting, uh, give the right setting to everyone. And it's also a question about power, how you are using your power. And uh, this is very interesting. And I think that, uh, again, uh, listening in a very deep way, what are you saying, you know, is helping us to make another step. So understanding that is a challenge for everyone. To and that's th that thing about like the power, just because a lot of people don't like the word power, I always like that there's nothing wrong about power. There's only something wrong about abuse of power. Yeah, it's a difference. And whatever you do and wherever you are and whatever role you have, you are powerful. Maybe yeah. you don't know it. But if you think like what impact you can do with your own behavior to make someone else's life better, there is an impact that you can do. If you have a team, it's very clear. If you get the pressure, that doesn't mean that you have to give the pressure to your team. That is what you're paid for as a manager. And if you don't have a team, you can also, you know, with what, what you bring in there, if you're supporting a colleague, that's very helpful to that one single person that you're supporting. So think about like the power that you can also use, because I think that is Sometimes we forget about the own traits that we have, about the own skills that we have. And sometimes we're getting like drawn in our frustration. And I think therefore it's so helpful to have that space where people remind you, if you have forgotten yourself, what you can actually make as a contribution. And funny enough, hmm. if people feel that you live to that culture, more and more people will start doing the same. If people feel that they can be whoever they are, Okay, men, women, queer, um, yeah. whatever religion, if they feel they can be who they are, yeah. they will up to it. And that gives a lot of room for others to also be who they are without trying to be squeezed into a template that they're not in. Yeah, I, I love what are you saying. And I would like you to underline because the chat is super <laughs> warm, super hot. And the time I say it's about stopping the more of myself culture. This mm -hmm. is a super strong, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And, and that more of myself, just because that's a terminology that so many people like mini me, um, people always use people that are just like them, um, similar people, because a lot of people don't know this is research. It's not a term of diversity or an inclusion. It's research by sociology. And there is a very famous, I'm writing her name in the chat, Rosabeth, um, what's her name? Now I'm forgetting, I'm, I'm thinking about it. So there's a, she's a Harvard professor for sociology. Her last name is Cunter. I think it's Rosabeth Cunter. Um, if someone of you maybe could just like, you know, Google her meanwhile and write it in the chat. She has already in the seventies been doing some research about like people always have the tendency to select people that are just like them, okay? Yeah. And men prefer men and women prefer women and gay people prefer gay people. I mean, it's kind of like, of course, now a little bit black and white. But I think we can all connect to that because if we're going to a party, you always look, oh, you also come from that city. Oh, ha, 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 do you know this and then? And blah, 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 right? But the point is like, we have to overcome that. And the 30% of different people, you need the 25 to 30% of different thinking in a group to change the majority thinking of the group. And I think that is just, if you're interested in that topic and that has nothing to do with gender diversity, that's the diversity of thinking. If you're thinking about innovation and right. someone is asking a question of employee experience, you yeah. need to bring the diversity of thinking into your product development team to develop the right product for yeah. whatever should be applied for, yeah? I like what you said about the diversity of thinking. Please, we are not speaking about gender. We are really speaking about the ability to think differently and to set the right situation where everyone can give the best to, to the team, to the results that you need to achieve. I'm looking also at uh, other uh, points uh, the, because there are so many, it's so interesting. Sorry if I'm not able to read everything, but uh, you can ask more. So someone is asking, how do you manage me, a parent, and then we work life balance a high leadership role, Janina. Tell us more about that. I was getting used to the fact of always being tired. 
I was getting used of the fact that I would always have a to do list, right? I mean, I always, I mean, this is my current to do list. It's, you know, it's never finished. And, and this is only what I need to do for my job, right? I mean, everything that I need to do for the rest is not done. And I got used to the fact that um, I'm not super in everything. So just like, you know, two weeks ago, I was like in the total, I guess many of you know that. I mean, I have teenagers and, um, you know, I'm, I was pretty stressed with some things that I had to finish on the project. And then the infrastructure didn't really work. And I also had to cook. And I was just like saying to the kids, I'm done, right? I don't know it. Fry some eggs. I don't give a shit honestly about it, right? So I was kind of like, you know, I better, I'm nearly freaking out. And then in the evening, I said, oh, sorry, kids, right? You know, you don't even have a mother who is preparing you a, a real meal, kind of like, you know, I felt a little bit guilty. And then my son said to me, he's like, that doesn't mind, mom. As, as long as we have nuggets in the freezer, <laughs> we prefer that you are a cool mother, right? And if you can't, if you don't do really the cooking that well, that's okay for us. I'm telling that just because if you have all of that, and it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, you cannot do everything every day. There is always a few things that fall down that you would like to do and you cannot do. And you just need to get used and need to get over to have that bad conscious about something. You're not perfect and that's okay. Yeah, so. I love what you said that also with your children that now are not anymore children. You are really trying to set the right condition also for them and looking who is better in the cooking and who is not. And you are me. Don't love to cook, absolutely. <laughs> so also admitted that uh, we cannot be perfect so we, we really need to, to to think in a consistent way and be like uh, as you are saying another question Yelena, and then i want that everyone is speaking directly with you sorry 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 but you have a lot a lot of great questions so someone and then i will say also who is this person say Change is hard for most people and yet so necessary, especially for multinational companies, Yelena, that want to be competitive. I can imagine based on your career role and desires to improve things that you dealt a lot with change management. What are the key things you watch out for to have a successful change result? So the first thing is, um, if you do change, and at least I've seen one person that, that, that used to work or still working for Siemens is, that means you will not be liked for quite some time by quite many people, okay? And that's another thing that you need to get used to it. When you want to change things, you will feel pressure and you will feel people that run against you and that will try to convince you with all means sometimes nice ones, but sometimes also not so nice ones behind your back of like stopping you to do it. And then it means that you listen to the arguments that are coming, why people will not support the change and to figure out whether you need to improve some of the ideas that you're having. I think that is something that you need to do, but also not to listen to everything and listen and pretty much like, you know, concentrate on the people that are supporting the change. It is so much energy eating and it's so frustrating if you always look at the people that are against you because they're eating your energy. But look at all of those people that actually were waiting for that change and that are supporting that change because they are there. If really you don't find them, then maybe whatever you have on your change agenda is not the right approach. But I have never ha it never happened to me. So just to make it very simple, if I'm doing a Twitter, a tweet on feminism, okay? If I post something on Twitter about clear feminism for an entire day, my whole feed and the answer is full of shit, okay? Of people that really give me the most whatever. So that means that day, if you wanna support something and if you write me something nice, I'm not gonna see it because I have put on that Twitter, that tweet, and then I don't read the comments anymore. Okay, because if I would read them, I would read so much shit and people telling me what an idiot I am and all of it. So it's not necessary because I know what's happening and sometimes it's a bot and sometimes it's real people and that's different opinions and that's okay. So I think this is the most important thing for change. And then in large companies, don't try change in the most political situation. So those of you that maybe work in a headquarters, 
you know, there's always a pretty competitive area and a lot of people are watching it. Try it out in an environment which is safe. And if it works, you can actually apply it to a larger part. Try to work with those that are supporting of it. And the last thing is you need to dare it. And once you have dared and you have seen how successful it is, you will want to do it again, right? Because then the times when you get the pushback doesn't feel that bad anymore than it did in the first time. And the more often you start a change process, the less often you're worried about it. Yeah. yeah. Just do it. Don't ask for permission. I mean, I always like say that, but don't ask for permission because yeah. no one will give you the permission to do a radical change. Yeah, great. This is a super important point, Yanina. Thank you so much. Can I ask to Isabelle Belanger to share with <laughs> to share with us your reflection at this moment, Isabelle? Oh hi. Um, I'm just a bit surprised. <laughs> uh, I find this uh, very interesting. I find the oh, actually I find the, the last part also very interesting about change because I have been in a situation where I was. Uh, I was uh, between two boards of companies and I had to, to do some change and it was quite difficult. And I think that uh, the idea of doing it on a smaller scale <laughs> maybe would have been better. And uh, I find this, uh, the, the whole discussion actually very interesting. And uh, well, the fact that uh, uh, actually, if you have to implement changes, you might not be liked. Uh, it's actually something that I had struggled with. So it's, uh, you have to be prepared. And I think that you have to be really prepared uh, before you do your change management and uh, and maybe have some training. <laughs> I didn't have any training and and that's that's uh, difficult then. But, but you know, um, and I have been, I think it was even in the kickoff session of She, she Leads, right? I was, if you were attending that session, I was referring to that video we you find on YouTube, Dancing in Leadership by Dancing on a Hill. I know that many of you know it. So there's a first one that's hard to change. You can watch it afterwards, like it's two or three minutes. And so you need to be super courageous to be the first one to go and embark on a new journey. You need to be very courageous to be the second one, but, and even the third one. But then eventually, if a lot of people are supporting it, it becomes less risky for you personally to do it. If you watch the video, you will, you will fully understand it. So I'm only asking you, if you're not courageous enough to be number one, number two, or number three, please, be number four, five, six, seven, or eight. Because the moment that you start supporting the courageous number one, two, or three, they will feel less awkward. They will feel less weird the sooner they get the support. And Isabel, that's the point when I was referring to pretty much like the first question that Maria Rosario was having. If you have a team that gives you direction, that is honest to you, that or you have colleagues, then you already know whether they are supporting your ideas. And if no one supports your ideas, then maybe it's a wrong idea, right? So I think that is always the thing. So if you have created that safe space where you feel home, where you feel happy, you will also have sooner people that are starting to dance with you. Yeah. And a lot of times people forget it. And maybe just because I was sharing that with one person this morning who was asking me for advice, a mentee of mine, she said, yeah, but nothing happens. And I said, how long have you been trying? Yeah, eight months. And I said, eight months is nothing. Eight months for an organization is nothing. And the larger the organization becomes, I can tell you one and a half years is nothing. Okay. So if you are really dramatically changing, you have to have a long breath. If you're thinking that eight weeks after you have been saying we want change, people start to change, it's not going to happen. Okay. You have to have in there and when you think it is not happening at all, then it will happen. Okay. But a year to change behavior is nothing. You need to really hold on to that. Yeah, super, thank you. I would like to ask also to Chitua. I don't know if uh, is the right way to pronounce uh, your name, Chitua. Hi, yes, Chitua, here I am. <laughs> Can you share with us uh, your reflection, listening and living this experience with uh, Yanina now? Uh, yes, um, just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to share your experiences with us. Um, I find it extremely helpful just to hear, um, you know, the, your different way of, of thinking and challenging. I think it's so important, especially um, 
you know, it, we're talking about change, but it's it's one of those things that's a constant in life, right? So it, even personal life, professional life, we're always kind of changing if we're growing. So I think it's so important that we think about how to manage that in the best way. And for those of us in roles, I myself, like Isabel as well, um, have to drive some change in uh, programs. And it's just important to uh, come to it with the right mindset and to find the sources of, of support and encouragement where I can. And also um, what you said earlier about really bringing uh, positivity. When you were introducing Anina, for example, her positive um, attitude and the energy that she brings to the situation, I think that also uh, makes you contagious, makes your ideas contagious, and it makes other people more receptive to um, the whatever your the, the ideas and the suggestions that you have. So I'm very much enjoying this discussion and um, appreciate you for for organizing and for, for sharing your thoughts with us. And thank you. And thank by you. the way, right, I mean, I also have bad days. Okay, don't get me wrong. You know, I have those days, like last Sunday, I had one of those days where I thought like, oh, you know, I mean, it was like, you know, the worst day of the year. Okay, the year is pretty new, right? But I would say it's like it was the the worst day of the last six months because a lot of things happened that I was just like totally but these days it's again you know about get up that one morning to make it every day will finish and if you have a lousy day it will finish eventually okay and maybe then it's hard to go to bed at 9 p.m right sometimes that's helpful as well so you're sooner out of it but I always like say it's like it has been a bad today and hopefully it's going to be a better today tomorrow yeah. yeah and by the way to that question about mentorship and maybe Maria Rosario always like says friendship. These are the moments when you need friends. Yeah. And they don't have to be at work, but this is the moments when you can pick up the phone or you can go and see someone, maybe not now, to say, I have such a lousy day. Can I cry on your shoulder? Hmm. And when you cry on that shoulder, you know, on your friend or your partner or whatever, it helps. Let it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Janina. You are so always so authentic and not again uh, because it is uh, cool to be authentic now. I and someone has been saying this is really hard um, at Siemens, um, obviously my former company. Yes, it is hard. Yeah. And I know that there is always, I mean, this morning that person said to me, but then I've been working, I have been moving three steps forward and then I get pushed back all of the three steps. And I said, yes. Yes, and it will happen over and over again. But the it, you will not take as much time to go the next three steps forward. And eventually in the same time, you will go six steps forward. But be ready to be pushed back. But don't give up. And find people that support you in not giving up. And I think this is a very important thing because when we get so frustrated about anything, it's about change, it's about feedback, and it's all of that. That's because we always address to those people that are criticizing us. And we forget that there's also people out there that maybe are supporting us. Yeah. So again, here, I think that is what you always have to balance out. And of course, it's unfortunate if you live, uh, live, I'm already saying live, if a work in an environment where everyone is against it, then maybe it's not the right environment for you. Yeah. Then we come back to being independent, having several options and maybe going somewhere else. Wow. Can I ask to Destina? to share her uh, ideas about friendship. We are working with Despina and uh, she said that something super interesting, I think. She said that she wanted, but I leave your, to you the stage, Despina. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm also surprised. Uh, really, really thank you for that uh, session. I think it is very inspiring and uh, give us a, a big a courage to, to, to keep, uh, uh, going and uh, believing ourselves and uh, never give up even if we pushed, uh, if we are pushed back as you said I think it's uh, it's important all the messages that you passed and that uh, that message that you said that we need someone to support us is that feeling that we all need to have that uh, we're not alone and someone uh, um, feels the way the same way as uh, we do uh, not a, not exactly the same thing but they understand. So this is something, uh, as uh, Maria Rosario said, uh, it was something that uh, we also had as an idea when we were talking about how to uh, improve uh, our relationship with the customers. And uh, yeah. one of the ideas that we had uh, uh, was that 
think about that the customer is your best friend. What would you like to do for him? Be there for him. So uh, this is not something that is applied also for, uh, the, for our customers, but also for our uh, professional life and for sure in our personal life. And I think that there are very strong messages uh, what you just uh, provided. Thank you for that. Uh, one question, if I may. Yes, please. So, please. so what happens uh, when you fail? What happens when you are trying so hard? <laughs> How do you convince yourself not, not to give up? Well, you said, okay, I managed today, but what how do you find the strength to? I mean, this is a question, you know, journalists love that question. What has been your biggest failure? Okay, so I'm asking that question to all of us. What is failure? Doing something not good? Could have been doing something better? Taking a wrong decision? Could have taken a better decision? Is that failure? If that is failure, it happens every day or it happens every week or whatever. That's okay. I think it's more the realistic thing to maybe not do the same thing twice. For me, real failure in a professional environment, right? Real failure is only happening if you don't allow people to speak up and if you have an environment where people are trying to hide because if they know that they can address that whatever you have decided doesn't work, and if they can address that the process doesn't work, and if they can address that the change approach that you had doesn't work or whatever, you can adapt it and you can redo it and you can do it before it is actually you know, happening. And I'm talking about for me failure because I was also responsible for safety. Failure was really when someone got injured or someone actually got killed. And most of the times it happened because people were not following the safety guidelines or people were observing that someone didn't follow the guidelines, but they didn't dare to speak up. Hmm. So that's why I would say it is this been a failure is you cannot change coming back. Remember when I said is like, if people only try as much that they're safe in their jobs, you know, remember that's the part when I said is like, yeah, of course, if you only do what someone tells you and you're just like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm doing it like this, then of course the risk that you're doing anything that is maybe like a mistake is not going to happen. But maybe you don't want to hear it, but I have been thinking so often about it. I don't think there is big failure. Because I mean, maybe someone can help me. What is a big failure where not people were there that no one listened to? Yeah. I mean, you're doing innovations and you develop new products. Yeah, of course, 90% of all of the innovations fail because you were working on a new approach and a new idea on a new technology. And eventually 90% of them are shit and 10% work out. That's a good rate for really working on innovations. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would, I would de, how should I say? I would, I would destroy a little bit the word of failure, but I would say it's like making mistakes. And the only thing if you re const constantly do the same mistake. Oh, that's a yeah. great, great answer. Thank you for that. Super. Thank you so much, Janina. I would like to ask Francisca to ask directly the question that is, she's writing on the chat, directly to Janina. I think that is very, very important for everyone. Hello, Janina. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. Um, First of all, I had the pleasure to to get the spirit of Janina Kugel while she was still at Siemens. And I, I have to say you did change a lot and still your legacy is there. We still live a bit what you have basically started. And um, personally, you, you, you inspired me a lot. I'm also a twin mom, so I related also with that uh, very much. And um, um, I, I found it extraordinary what you did, how many we say in German, those those uh, thick um, wooden boards that you had to drill um, within that very male environment and, and old uh, hierarchical environment. So thanks for that. Um, my question is because I feel I also have lots of energy. I want to change things and I have a couple of my projects. I, I think that that need to be, um, yeah, that, that, that uh, I want to drive, but I cannot. I don't have all the energy to stick with all of them. How how do you decide which are the battles um, you you stick with and which battles you you um, 
you fight and which you just dismiss because your energy is out. Hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Francisca. Um, again here, I can actually only say of an old saying, which is so true. Only choose, I mean, only try to change things that you can influence. Okay, so if you can't influence the situation, you can't be responsible for the change, right? I mean, if someone else would have to take a decision, that is, you can maybe talk to that person, you can try to influence that person, but you cannot take it. And I think for me, there is two things of like losing energy or stress. You know, there is that you're busy with something and maybe it's difficult, but you're still thrilled that you want to make it happen. It's, it's stressful, but it's positive. And then there is the things when energy is drawn in you. Yeah. Remember that feeling when you think it's like, you know, they suck it out of you. Huh? And so that's the point when sometimes if you have, if you believe that you have done all of it and you have gone through more than that year, I think there's always a question, can I influence it alone? Do I need other people that are supporting me? You know, those people that are dancing with you on the hills. And if it doesn't work, then maybe you cannot make it. Yeah. But a lot of people get frustrated about things where they don't have an impact. Yeah. And so I think this is one of the things for you, for your own to really also, you know, it's kind of like a safe environment that you also have to build. And eventually, you know, you have to, to live with that fact as well. But again, if you have those people that dance with you, then I think you will also get a better opportunity to, to make it happen. Now, my daughter has been looking in there. She's currently doing a tiramisu and I guess she needs some help. So I signaled her she has to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Janina. Thank you, Francisca, for the question. So I would like now to really see. Uh, thank you, Carlotta. Thank you so much. I absolutely love the conversation. Janina, you are a real inspiration. I appreciate your natural and wise way to approach life. Yeah, me too, Yanina, absolutely. And I would like now, <laughs> Tiramisu is international, Rafael Amadeo. So I would like to share now with you the, 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 the question. So please, um, Mariam, how can we identify the most inspiring words that Yanina is uh, sh sharing with us? <laughs> So in this page, please write down in your opinion, what was the most inspiring word in a conversation with Yanina Kugel? So just try to choose just one word, type it in the box and send it. Thank you. You have two minutes to answer. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, courage. Uh, yeah. Authentic, failure, courageous, authentic, team, authenticity, courageous. Patience, diversity of thinking, I like a lot. Diversity of thinking, patience again, authentic failure team, independence, fantastic. <laughs> Difference between the mentorship and sponsorship, great. Yes, I like a lot. Women are over mentored and sponsored. <laughs> I like this one as well. Uh, open minded, fun, honesty, friendship. French is also special, listening to his word in a conversation like this one, I like. But still courage is still the center. Uh, independence again, fantastic. Safety thing, moving things forward, encouraging. And fun is so little. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fearless, so oh, this is great a choice, uh, yeah, yeah. Also the options, I really love what she said about the options, maintaining different options. And maybe if I can say that, because many of you were saying courage, ah. there are, for every one of us, there is environments in which you can be easier courageous than in others. So think about it. If you believe that you, I mean, the question is again here, are you number one or are you number five to dance on the hill? But sometimes there is environments that are supporting to be courageous and others that are not. Most of the organizations say they would support courage and they would support diversity, but they're not automatically always doing. So I think this is also one of the things that you should always think about, like 
what can you create on your own? What can you create in your smaller team or with your colleagues that you're working for? But then also, is that the right environment? Yeah, this is very important, Janina. And, and then I was asking, do I, do I believe that change is chef sache? So it depends from the top. I think it's helpful if you have someone at the top of the organization or high up in the organization that lives it, it's easier. But you, it only works, change only happens if you find the connection to the entire organization that does it with you. And I always say the French Revolution did not start for the king. So think about like you need both in the best case. Yeah. And another example that I could also say, think about the people. So Black Lives Matter, Fridays for Future, this came not from the top. Yeah. It was the amount of people believing in one thing and having the importance to push it. Now, of course, with Black Lives Matter, there were famous people that were supporting it as well. But the original idea did come from very normal people, you know, that were affected or they had a belief. I like what you're saying because everyone can really change the setting of things. And we have also a very little participant today, very young, with Lorenzo. Ciao, Riccardo. <laughs> Are you interested in what Yanina is saying? <laughs> Ciao, Riccardo. <laughs> yes, he's very happy listening to you, Yanina. <laughs> This is always the good thing about the sessions with your business partner. There is always so much human factor in there. But just because this is happening, and actually I don't see you on the screen, um, Francesco, but the thing is, you know, when you bring in your professional environment, also normal environment, the normal way, I think it actually creates something, right? What we could see in the times of COVID when we suddenly, you know, the little things, maybe someone was on TV and then the kid came in, you know, the journalist or whatever. I mean, we saw some very personal moments of people and maybe that is also because we're running out of time that I would like to say is we are human beings and we have a personal side. And I think if you want to create that environment at work, you need to create also an environment where people can bring their personal sides to work as well, because we are not super professional if you're trying to be in that template. So sometimes it's little signs and little stories that you can also share to make you more approachable and to make you also more human. And I think this is what we all rely to. Yeah, yeah, you are so, yes, it's so true. It is so affordable for everyone. So I want to say this really, I, I, you know, I love Yanina in an amazing way. And uh, she's always Yanina. So she's always Yanina. She was, uh, <laughs> this is something very <laughs> special about her. She was a member of the board uh, of uh, Siemens AG, very, very important role. And uh, normally when someone is looking, is losing a position like that, everyone is losing the interest to this person. In, in your case, Yanina, it's the opposite. <laughs> because you is always yourself, always. And what I learn uh, really every time from you, that I love uh, speaking with you, is that uh, the first person who needs to change is me. And uh, for this reason, I, I was uh, reading uh, a question about how to climb and became uh, part of, uh, become a part of the boards of company. I was not reading this question because this is not uh, really, for me, is not interesting. My question is how can I be myself understanding the secret of Yanina? So to be always myself, a contributor every time in any kind of situation to help everyone to be herself, himself and contribute for the best for the good of a company, for the good of people. This is what I wanted to learn from you, Yanina. Inside the company, outside the company, with uh, my son, with my daughter, with my husband, with my company. So this is something unique that you, you are really great in doing that. Thank you. No, it's true. <laughs> my dear, so I would like to stay with you, all of you and Yanina for all the night, but uh, we have to leave. 
And before to leave, I wanted to really thank you, Janina, and thanks everybody that was so interesting. Listen to you, listen your chat, asking to, to take your stage, to stay with directly, directly with Janina, because uh, I think this is uh, an amazing opportunity to understand how can I be myself and contribute for the good for the world. Thank you so much, Yamina. Thank you so much, really. So, I would like also to thank uh, Patricia Fabricatore, who is, uh, she's with us, and she will be the next uh, uh, leader we want to meet uh, with us the 8th of March. I want to, to introduce shortly Patricia. She will be with us uh, the, the next meeting of She Leads, and uh, she's uh, from, uh, from Italy, but she's responsible of a senior director of global employee relationship at AstraZeneca in the UK, particularly in Cambridge. It will be very interesting also to chat with her. And then in April, we will have uh, another very important, very nice, very beautiful conversation with Isabel Capon. Isabel, uh, uh, she's uh, from uh, uh, the world of fashion. And it's uh, very interesting to see how she's creating a new business. Thank you so much. We are really waiting for your thoughts, your reflections, because we wanted to see, understand how you are living this conversation. And again, it was an idea of Yanina, because she said to me last time, you are able to create a special environment. Are you understanding if we could create the same environment in a company, how we could be powerful in a positive way. So for this reason, I wanted to understand from you, from your experience, what you are experiencing during a conversation, a session like this one, because we could together put the same setting also in your, in our companies. We don't could uh, give up. We have to improve our company too. My dears, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.